It seems like the biggest compliment you can pay the new Spider-Man game on PlayStation 4 is that it really makes you feel like Spider-Man. Spider Spider <laughs> Spider-Man, Spider-Man, bring me pictures of Spider-Man. He's a menace, he's a threat, leeching off taxpayer debt. Bring me pictures of Spider-Man. Oh, thank you. Thank Got you very much. <laughs> yes, yes I did. Welcome to a new series here on Jacob's Gaming Weekend. We are playing Spider-Man for the PS4. Well... I'm not. In fact, this is why I almost hate the name of my show, Jacob's Gaming Weekend. Top of the market pie. Dude. Because I'm there. Because where? Top the, of the market pie. While there is gaming and a weekend here, I'm not doing any of the gaming this time. I'm handing that off to my good friend and, according to Nick, face of the channel, John Fox. Top of the more piety. Oh God! No. I would I would say let's just play the. Yep, the, let's just the play Spider Man. Hi, it's I would me, say John to, Fox, would, your boy. It's your boy, John Fox. I would say let's just do the take you did of that from take one, but I wiped the tape. So. Yeah. There was a take one. There's take one. <laughs> we're we're doing this on amazing. Just yeah, doing regular. I would say not so, gonna not uh, gonna the, hurt the anyone on. involved. So. <laughs> Anyway. So for those of you who, uh, I don't want to, should I ruin the magic or should I just let them believe Santa is real? Okay, so Oops. I haven't played this game before, but we I have 100%ed it. John Jacob hasn't has played it. John has 100%ed it. However, I was like, hey, let's play this game on a system that I'm not completely familiar with and a game that I haven't played before on Expert. And he, the, yeah, he played it on expert and just went, yeah, let's go. And the then first he immediately take regretted didn't, it. Didn't go well. We didn't speak, and we were on the tutorial for like an hour. Yeah, it and wasn't it just, good. It was my it was bad. Not fun. So, <laughs> so here's the thing. This first episode is the only take two we're doing. I've seen through the game, but John hasn't seen past the tutorial yet, so we're yep. just going to pretend that we're seeing everything in the tutorial for the first time. I've seen the wow. tutorial boss Wow, fight. look, he, he does his web shooters in this game. I yeah, didn't know so that. As we, were, as we said in the first take, that does not exist anymore. No, it's been um, wiped from existence. If you think that Spider-Man like makes his like own webs like organically or, or something, that's only in the Tobey Maguire movies, and it was something that kind of carried over into the. I comic mean, it was books. shooting out of his veins, and yeah, thing, wasn't shooting it? out of his veins, like his, which which kind of suggests medical emergency. Like, <laughs> has his blood been replaced with webbing? Yeah. How does he live? How does he sustain? Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> I like how you went back for your controller. Because you were like, oh yeah, right, the phone vibrating. Is yeah, the, the phone vibrates in the controller. It's a neat, it's a neat feature. Um, oh yeah, by the way, my prediction is that uh, he, that the toast is gonna come out burnt. Well, he sniffed his suit and was disgusted with it. Yeah, he was. What's he been doing last night in that Spidey suit? Uh, webbing. Webbing. <laughs> Yes, he was. I, yeah. That could be many things. I don't want to think about the other things anymore. <laughs> Let's was go. That, was that an accidental double entendre on I your think part? it was very Pay accidental. your bills, Peter! <laughs> yep. Yeah. All right. So John Fox's first plot prediction from take one uh, is that... Uh, he gets evicted. He's getting evicted. And, and, I, and take your bets, audience. Is he going to get evicted? I yeah. mean, I know the answer, but I'm not saying. Okay, so... All right, here we go. Wow, this is... Ooh. Wow, are you impressed, John? I think I... It's amazing how quickly you're picking this up. You well... You're you learning know. it so well. It's, it's quite something. You know... Um, I must say, this is... Uh, wow, it's... it's uh, you know... You know, Jacob... I, I, would, I would imagine people would struggle with it the first time they've ever played the game before, but... Uh, you, you know, seem to be doing just fine. Wow, look at you go, running up. It's like you already knew how to run up the walls. Uh, uh. Did you take him down yet? No. We're at Fisk Tower, but still waiting on the warrant. You know, so I want to talk a little bit here. 
uh, in, in more depth than I did last time we did this. Yeah. About how disappointed I am that Daredevil has been canceled from Netflix. Yeah. If, if only for the fact that th- that was the MCU's depiction of Wils- Wilson Fisk. That's the only depiction they've had so far. Yeah. And holy mother of God, was he uh, good on that show. Because that was, like, I mean, he was, like, he was in Daredevil, like, the closest thing the MCU had to a villain like the Joker. Except Fisk was, like, mentally stable. So he was, which actually made, in my mind, made him slightly more intimidating. Because, you know, the Joker is very much like a sardonic, like, ha-ha, I kill people and that's the joke. But, like, Fisk was like, no, I'm serious. Like, if you f*** up, you are at the end of everything, like he was slamming people's heads in the car doors and all this other crazy shit. I mean, like he was one of those people. Like you don't expect him to go insane until he does. Yeah. And I have to credit that to Vincent D'Onofrio, who is one of the best people. If you're gonna be getting like someone who's like at first seems not threatening and then like really just throws a ringer at you goes you get hand. you get private pile from full metal jacket like that's what you do <laughs> well you know someone who does intimidating really well that you don't expect is Patrick Stewart he uh, uh, yeah and he was in the um, green room I believe it it was it's oh uh, yeah that that movie Nick always talks about yeah and Patrick Stewart plays this very intimidating like skinhead neo-nazi dude and you don't you think patrick stewart you're like oh professor x you think patrick stewart you're like oh what a sweet captain old, picard captain picard what a sweet old man and then you're just like oh and then you remember oh he's done like shakespeare like, yeah he's actually like a shakespearean actor like he actually is really i mean he's he's knighted like yeah like he's yeah, really yeah. good <laughs> is he doing okay patrick stewart as far as I know. <laughs> There's no, I'm not saying that out of concern. I'm just saying that out of like, I hope he's having a good day today. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we all hope that Patrick Stewart is having a good time and is doing well in life because that is what he deserves. Oh, yeah, he does. He deserves it very well. What I love seeing is when he hangs out with Ian McKellen. Yeah. And the two of them are like best buds. I yeah. Mean, it's like... I mean, they were best buds, like, long before they were uh, Magneto and Charles Xavier. Uh, yeah, yeah, they were, like... Like, their their friendship dates back, I think, to, like, the 70s and stuff, because they were both doing, like, Broadway and different parts, or, or different shows in London's West End, so... At, like, the simultaneous times. So they kept seeing each other all the time in the theater. Yeah, and um, I think... Like, something that I was just, like, um, upset about was that, um, oh, that's neat. Is that everyone? Yep. Um, I was like, wait, what do you mean that, like, Patrick Stewart wasn't Ian McKellen's best man or something, but then it turns out that, like, Ian McKellen, like, officiated the wedding, (laughs) and I was like, oh, well, (laughs) I shouldn't have doubted (laughs) <laughs> like he's not the best he's not the best man but like he's the one marrying them yeah so like <laughs> which is a, I would say even a step higher than the best man wouldn't you like my god that like, is you, such a good you get romance the, yeah I mean really if, if like you got the license to wed people and then like you do it for your best friend and like you s- forget the best man yeah like, you just came from a wedding didn't you John I did um my friend got married to his high school girlfriend, and you know, we're 22 now, 22, 23, and it's just one of those relationships that was like, man, this is, it's one of those ones where you're like, you know, high school relationships, you're like, eh, it's not going to work or something like that. Uh, but this every one, single one I witnessed. <laughs> but this one, it's one of those, you're like, wow, like, this is the whole, like, this is... The dream. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, this is... This is that fantasy, and I'm really happy that it seemed that they're happy together, and it was a wonderful wedding. 
We went, I was one of his groomsmen, we went axe throwing in Pittsburgh, and, you know, that was just <laughs> amazing. You, you told me you did, like, amazing at that, like, you were second place. I was second place, uh, Jeff won the, which, I mean, is... I didn't let him win. I very much wanted the sticker. <laughs> I wanted the prize. I wanted the prize. Give me but the prize. At the end of the day, Jeff was the better axe thrower. But it was a lot of fun. Like, can I just say that you just feel so like manly axe throwing? <laughs> like. I imagine it's what lumberjacks do. Yeah, you're just like, I'm a lumberjack, and and it's I'm okay. okay. I think both. <laughs> yeah. It's impressive to me how well you're plowing through this. Yeah, thanks, dude. I try. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. I'll just come out of the elevator, like, and now it's our turn. Yeah. <laughs> we're just waiting. It's funny, like, I watch uh, PewDiePie, I watch Markiplier occasionally, and every so often I watch Jacksepticeye, mainly because... I saw him interview Jason Momoa recently on his channel, and like I like all of them. They're all decent people. Mm -hmm. But um, Team Four Star is actually like probably like their Let's Plays mm -hmm. are the ones that I probably enjoy the most. I would enjoy them far more if they did more editing. I would enjoy them more if they finished a series. <laughs> like, well, because, I mean, if we're talking about TFS gaming here, which is what I'm assuming you're talking about in reference to the Let's Play thing, um, or are you talking about their abridged stuff? Because they've just finished Helsing. Like, yeah, that was... Which... Like, you know, when uh, the voice of Vegeta does... Lanny, Pator, Yeah. Nick. <laughs> Nick, his real name's Nick, actually. Huh. Oh, Crazy shit. enough. Excuse me, let me just, uh, walk at you, like, oh, just, you're unconscious, just... my bad. <laughs> I, th I thought you were t tougher. I thought you were made of sterner stuff. Which, can we just talk about how, like, I'm very happy that they are, um, continuing a bridge, Dragon Ball. Well, because I think there was a comment that Kaiser said on, um, uh, Twitter, like, he was like, ah, I'm thinking this might be the end. And yeah, because they're having so much trouble with, like, copyright and YouTube, right? Well, and also, like, everyone there's... Everyone is, like, and that's the whole abridged thing. Yeah. Because uh, as much as I love abridging, at, at, it, at its very core, abridging is essentially unofficial dubs of anime. Yeah. And that gets into, uh, even further gray area than a lot of fair use things, you know? Yeah. Like, it, you know, as much as I don't watch his show anymore, like, this Nostalgia Critic is like, okay, so, he'll play clips of the movie, but, like, he's also got all this stuff floating around it. But, like, you know, with Team Four Star, it is pretty much like, they, they do... For as much as they talk about support the official release and we're not, like, all that stuff, they kind of, in some way, they can act as a substitute for the original. They really... Okay. And they, and, dis just... and they dislike it all the time when people say it. Like, did you see when they did the season... When they did the end of the Cell Saga? And then all these articles came out from, like, actual, like, publications. About how they did it better. How they said they've done the definitive version of the Cell Saga. And they all unanimously went, no, 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 we didn't. And the truth is, is that I'm, I, speaking as someone who has never watched Dragon Ball, ever, not seen a single episode, and has seen, at <laughs> most, <laughs> clips of Super. Yeah. I actually prefer the Team Four Star version of that show. And if And when I do watch the original version of that show, or I watch clips of it, I'm always taken aback by how weird it seems to me that it's not more like the Team Four Star one. You know, I mean, I I am of that thing, and you know, like I got an entire emotional reaction from watching Team Four Star do the Cell Saga. Yeah. And 
they did it in those like that final battle with Gohan and everything. Like I get it. People have had decades to talk about how oh that the fight scene is amazing and everything. Blah, 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 right? I watched or I tried to watch that fight scene. Like they had the compilation of it on YouTube. Yeah. And it was like two hours long. Yep. And I, I fell asleep, because after a while, I was like, do something. Yeah, so... I mean, what they can do is they can pace it out, you know? My own experience with, like, Dragon Ball Z and everything... And I hear that the original Dragon Ball didn't have this problem, because, like... Like, that's when Tien is, like, a major threat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and stuff. But, like, my experience is, like, I, was, I watched Saturday morning cartoons, and in between, like, Chaotic and Yu-Gi-Oh! was Dragon Ball, and I was watching during the Frieza saga, you know? Mm -hmm. And, I'm sorry, but it's awfully hard, because they just spend so much time, like, powering up, and, like, that's part of the original joke of Dragon Ball Bridge, as I understand, is just making it abridged. Well, because the story goes that because the whole Dragon Ball franchise was a manga first. It was. And the first run of it, the original, original Dragon Ball was the manga. And yeah. then the manga finished, and then they did the, the anime version of it. They did the Z version of Dragon Ball simultaneously with the manga. So the manga was being produced at the same time. And that's something that happens with a lot of manga. And uh, like Full Metal Alchemist uh, abridged, I mean not abridged. Full Metal Alchemist, the first one. Um, the reason why it's so different from it's not what I meant to do. Um, Brotherhood is because Brotherhood was made after the anime was done, right? Mm-hmm. And so it follows the original story of the manga. So there's a lot of dragging it out, but. Watching like watching Dragon Ball and Saturday morning cartoons was miserable because it was a entire year of the fucking Frieza saga and nothing happens. Yeah. So Well because they're just waiting. Like the animators and the editors of the anime have to keep waiting for the manga to come out. Yeah. I mean it's a similar thing, honestly, it's a similar way to they, the way they did Game of Thrones. And the difference is that with Game of Thrones, they're waiting and waiting and waiting for George R. R. Martin to write the next book. And finally, they're like, you know what? Like, f*** it. We're just going to do our own thing. We're just going to, like, okay, we've now surpassed where the books are, so now we're just making up the story of our own because we can't keep waiting for you to finish it anymore. Yeah. You know, and that was the difference is that with Dragon Ball, they kept waiting for Toriyama to finish writing a thing. So they'd be like, okay, well, we're caught up to where they are now, but they're still drawing it, so we need Wait to... for Goku! We're just gonna have, like, you know, how many episodes of them powering up while we're... And we're just gonna leave them on a holding pattern until they tell us what the next part of the story is. Yeah. You know? But, so, I have not watched, um... I have not watched, like... The original Dragon Ball or um, Up. I'm Spider-Man. I can Spider go Man. up. There's a Z-axis here. Uh, yeah, there is a Z-axis. A Z-axis? A Z-axis. -Z um, but I started watching uh, Dragon Ball Bridge, I'm about on the 30th episode. Mm -hmm. And I've seen the finale, of course, um, which was amazing. Um, I watched... Um... Oh, this is so excessive. Uh-oh. So wait, can I web it? Uh... Later, you can. Okay. Uh, there's going to be this thing that shows up after the tutorial called skill points, where you can start up, like you can start upgrading to like uh, web up people's weapons. You can pull them out of their hands, and then there'll eventually be a point where you can grab the rockets out of midair and throw them back at the enemies. Cool. But that is a long way of upgrading. Like there is a little bit of an RPG element to this. And that you need to level up and get more moves through leveling up. And you, like, upgrade your uh, mechanics and stuff so you can do different things with the web shooters. You get different webbing abilities and all this other stuff. Okay, that's cool. I think what a lot of the better abridging content creators can do is take... Because they're leaning it down and because they're getting to the emotional heart and core of what makes those shows those shows... They actually can improve upon the source material if they wish. If they wish. And, um... And I think to a degree they did that with the Cell Saga. Even if they were unintentionally doing that, they... 
had the freedom to do their own interpretation, which was highly entertaining and very emotionally packed. And if you read those uh, reviews of the end of the DBZ A season three, and again, like uh, it was reviewed by like actual publications and things, you would see that they were all like, "Look, they had to do." You could tell that it was made by fans of the show. Like yeah. they knew what was important to leave in, what was important to keep out, what elements to accentuate. Oh, to be fair, I was on like. No health act because I let myself get hit by rockets. Mm -hmm. But I will say, like, even though I have not read the original manga and I'm working my way through Dragon Ball Abridged. There's a Dragon Ball Abridged? Dragon. I meant Dragon Ball Z. Um, oh, okay. I can't words right now, guys. Uh, okay, so then I started I'll... watching Dragon Ball Super. Oh, yeah. And I, like, I had the benefit of watching it as it came out and it's I think it avoids most of the trouble that you know regular well because Toriyama's heading that one up which yeah. he didn't do on the other ones like the yeah. other ones were being done just while he was focusing on the manga and so Dragon Ball Super is great like the tour like there are bits of course where it gets like ridiculous and mm -hmm. overpowered and all that stuff but so, so, I mean... Dragon Ball Bridge was a good introduction into Dragon Ball. Which I can see. I mean, like, <laughs> my original original point, too, to go back to this, was that um, you were talking about how you watch a little bit of Pewds, a little bit of Jacksepticeye, and I thought... But you said that you mainly watched things like TFS, and I thought that you were talking about their gaming content. Oh, fair, yeah. Which, that's what I meant by I said they need more editing. Yeah. Because, I mean, and this is not a slam. We did kind of get off, uh... Yeah. We did get kind of off topic. Well, you had a, uh, points, and I wanted to go further into them. But, I mean... That's my only complaint about TFS Gaming, is that I think they would have a miraculously good amount of content on their hands if they just edited it down. Well, you see... Because what's clear to me is that the, what's making up the majority of TFS Gaming is they're reposting live streams from Twitch. And that's fine, but, like, I, 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 they have so many pregnant pauses and moments where just no one's talking and just well, the energy level Well, I think there depletes. is a bit more editing in, like, at least in Renegade for Life. Well, yeah, because that is not, that, yeah. the difference is that Which, that's not a live that, stream That thing. is what I meant by, uh, I've been watching some of those mm. Let's Plays, and I wish that they would, like, actually, like... Like, I'm okay with there being a lot of cuts, but I'd like to see the end of the game with the guy who voices Vegeta, Lanny Pator? Lanny Pator. Real Lanny name, Pator. Nick Landis. Nick Landis. Which, isn't that great that, like, I'd like to watch Nick play more games. Yeah. <laughs> you Nick hear? needs to finish, uh... There's, like, I mean, if uh, we're talking about SOC now, like, I don't... Oh, that's not... Oh, oh. Or are we talking about TFS? Uh, SOC. SOC. So, the day that we're recording this, um, I don't know if you noticed this, the uh, final episode of Doki Doki Literature Club was released. Ah! Which, how... Let's give me, now that we've... Now that you're... It's been a long, long time since you've recorded that, I imagine, and, uh... It's been a long, long time since the ending of that uh, series came out. Tell me now some of your reflections on the uh, the fun that is Doki Doki Literature Club. It's, I mean, it's a really good game, and I like all the poems that they include in it. I actually, like, it was timely because I had to go into a poetry yeah, class. Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> yeah, and, like, it was, it actually gave me some, like... Inspiration? I wouldn't say inspiration, but some nice tips. Frame of reference. Fr yeah, frame of... Yeah. And the game has a good message. I saw at the end of it, Rob referenced the fact that there were all those like hidden things in the game. Did you guys ever try to find out what those were? I mean, we kind of ended up being like... Because I'll give you I'll give you a little hint here if you don't already know or if you didn't already research it, because it's out there. 
And I'll say this in case Nick didn't already look it up. I I think it would be best to just uh, leave <laughs> leave that out because <laughs> I think I know what you're talking about and. I didn't want it spoiled. <laughs> well, I'm not going to say what it is. Yeah. But I will just say, there is no such thing as a dot .character file. <sighs> That's not an encoding. <sighs> so. <laughs> and I'll leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> just knock out your own guys. Do it. Do my job. What do I Ooh. pay you for? What do I pay you for? My name's Wilson Fish. What do I pay you for? You don't pay us anything, sir. We're working for tip money. <laughs> well, heck. By the way, is this a twist for you all? Because I think this is the first time in a while that we've had... I've allowed some uh, profanity on the show. I've been employing secretly... Uh, a tactic that I did back in 2013 on my first Let's Play show, which is, uh, ooh, slam a man. Uh, I'm impl ooh. I've been employing the censorship technique on the show that I did for the first Let's Play show I had, where I censor based off of what game I'm playing, and because I've been doing a lot of E-rated games, I've had to censor a lot of stuff, which means, and this is not a slam, but it means that when I do a video with Nick and Rob and it's an E-rated game, I really gotta bleep a lot of stuff out. Yeah. But uh, this is the first time where it's rated T, so I am okay with some shits flying around here and there. Because it's, it's like a PG-13 rated video. I mean, Ooh. YouTube is so stingy these days anyway with being advertiser friendly and they like will block oh, you. Oh shit. Not... Uh, you know, maintaining everything that's advertiser friendly, which is such nonsense anyway. Ho, ho, ho. Come on, man, you can do it. Don't, don't let this. I was about to call him a rhinoceros of a man, but there already is that in this game. I was gonna say, in he the, is in this, not the rhino. He is not the rhino, no. I am the rhino! Oh shit. So wasn't that the biggest wasted opportunity in Amazing Spider-Man 2 when Paul Giamatti was the rhino for like 22 seconds and then and just like was there and left? I didn't hate it. Oh shit. You just need to tap it once, man. Yeah, I know. I just wasn't thinking. Um, yeah, that one it wasn't it wasn't needed. Like I was okay with him just being like a tease for the next movie. Like, I really like the ending of Amazing Spider-Man 2 where it ends with him going back into the fight. But the problem is, like, I don't mind Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man. I actually liked him. He wasn't bad. Um, I break up with you, Peter. I break up with you. Like I said, I personally liked Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man. He was decent. And I feel like his time came too soon. Myself. Um, I think that the problem was that the second movie shot itself in the foot it really so did. much. Because like, I was like, oh I yeah, Electro is going to be the main villain here. And then they bring in uh, the least interesting version of the Green Goblin, his son. Uh, which, can we just say, we had that one actor playing Harry Osborn. Yeah. Uh, he played in um, October Skies. He was in the Muppet movie, like the, like, 2009 one or whatever. I mean, are we talking the, which version are we talking about here? The... We're talking about, like, the most recent Muppet movie. Yeah, like, the no, second most recent. Which, which version of Spider-Man are we talking about here? Amazing Spider-Man 2. Oh, okay. The guy who plays the green, like, who plays Harry Osborn, the generic green goblin. Harry Osborn? Yeah. That actor would have made a great Green Goblin, but then they pass it off to his son, who was played by Dane DeHaan, <laughs> I think, who couldn't, wasn't going to be bad, well, it's just... Yeah, uh, I don't know. So anyway, I would say this has been uh, a better episode one. Yeah. Uh, we will see you that, well, let me say thank you so much for watching the show. Hope you enjoyed you, it. Hope you enjoyed it. If you like what you see, be sure to hit the subscribe button, ding the bell to be notified about when new videos come out. Smash that like button, share the video with your friends. 
check out more of the Gaming Weekend, then check out more of Serenade of Caffeine, where you can see more of John. Yeah. And we will see you all next week. Bye-bye!